Philadelphia. This brother um, has an inspiration and is inspirational to a lot of other people, especially the young people in Philadelphia. The programs that um, he has helped create and set up, the books that he writes, the missions that he goes on. You know, I've seen this brother walk into some of the darkest, um, darkest corners and gather some of the young, the roughest brothers and sisters, and then able to have parlay, able to have a conversation with them, able to engage them on their issues, able to help them decide that they themselves are the guys they see, the other guys they see. So, uh, my brother, who's formerly known as Mitchell Chance is going to come up here and say a few kind words to the family. My brother, be a big boy. I don't know about say a few kind words. That's not really my style. I'm not a, I'm not a kind, kind word uh, person. I'm a, a challenger. If we're not challenged, we won't, we won't move, so I'm sorry. Uh, Carl, don't ever say I'm coming up to give somebody some kind of words. <laughs> that ain't, that ain't, that's not me. But I have been challenged myself with the task by our leader here, Pat Alexander. Appreciate you so much, brother, for bringing me down here for the second year, and hopefully I'll be here for years to come with you. I've been tasked tonight with really setting the tone uh, for tonight, for the rest of the weekend, and then what's going to happen after this weekend, because what we're doing here, uh, what this weekend is about, is not just some conference for us to come and have here kind words, or for us to come get motivated, but it's a summit for us to actually create what it is that we need. As Carl talked about earlier, last year we talked about needing farming, and this year we got farming. So tonight, I, I, will, I really want to set the tone. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to challenge you. And if you accept the challenge, I guarantee we as a people will definitely build. So now we are at the Black Liberation Movement Building Black Power Summit. Am I correct? Yes, sir. So, so now we're talking about building black power. Well, first, what's black power? I know we hear a lot of negative connotations on black power. You know, the enemy will tell us that black power is some kind of racist ideology. And for those of us who do not understand or know our history, we fall victim to what they teach us about ourselves. Well, in 1966, Kwame Toure, then known as Stokely Carmichael, but a march I believe might have been here in Mississippi. Greenwood. In Greenwood, he, he, he says, the world already knows what white power is, mm -hmm. but it's time for us to see black power. That's right. We need black power. And the essence of what he's saying is, we need to see us have autonomy or control over our own lives. Right. So when we're talking about building black power, we're talking about putting ourselves in a position where nobody outside of ourselves dictates anything about who we are. That's right. But if we look at right now, others dictate our history, right. others dictate our presence, and others dictate our future. But the goal of the Black Liberation Movement and its Building Black Power Summit is for us to put in practical things in order for us to have our own autonomy, in order for us to dictate our destiny. So tonight, I, I want to challenge you, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you, is my life leading me to liberation? I want you to ask yourself that. Is my life leading me to liberation? We understand we need it, but what are we actually doing in order to attain the liberation that we talk about? Because we got a whole lot of talkers. We have a whole lot of philosophers. We have a whole lot of theoreticians. We have a whole lot of scholars. We have a whole, and, and, and understand, there's nothing wrong with scholars. There's nothing wrong with being educated. But what I'm saying is, if we're not implementing some of the things that we learn and know, it means nothing. So is the life that you're leading, leading you to liberation? And I'm gonna break that question down four different ways. The first way I'm gonna ask you is, are your thoughts leading you to liberation? What do you think about daily? What goes into your mind? What are your political views? How do you view yourself and your brothers and your sisters? How do you view your history? What kind of thoughts do you have? 
Are you still thinking some integrationist mindset where you just want to vote and hopefully the president or the mayor or the city council is going to change your life? Are you still thinking that you can go to some Caucasian college and all of a sudden they're going to teach you how to overthrow the systems that they put in place? What are your thoughts? If your thoughts aren't thoughts that will lead to liberation, then those are some thoughts that you got to get out of your mind. But you got to challenge yourself. What am I thinking about every day? Or when certain conversations come up, how do I view them? You know, as Carl said, he got called racist. You don't know how many times my own people fight me over things I say about the enemy. Every time I speak about or break down how things are systematic, because that's what I do. I teach, I teach from a psychological aspect so we can really understand how these systems work and how they grab our mind. But as soon as I start teaching this, oh, you just hate white people. It ain't got nothing to do with hate. It got everything to do with love, loving my people. But I have, I have to make sure my thinking is right. And the only way I can make sure my thinking is right is if I deprogram myself from everything I learned from them. You can't, you can't think your enemy is going to educate you properly. And we have been educated by them on every front, whether it's formal education, whether it's religious education, our concepts about God, our concepts about history, everything that's in our mind has been taught to us by them, but it's time for us to challenge those thoughts, especially when we have that cognitive dissonance when somebody begins to talk about something that's going to empower black people, and you be like, oh, that's bad, we can't do that. You start talking about fighting back, and or we start talking about fighting back, and you start talking nonviolence. I'm sorry, I can't get with you. Now, I ain't talking about just starting a race war, but you ain't just going to do something to me, and I'm just going to let you smack you. So are my thoughts leading me, leading us to liberation? The second way I'm going to ask this question is, are your actions leading you to liberation? What do you do every day? Oh, you, you spent your money to go see Black Panther. And oh, they got mad at me when I said, that's a white movie. That's not a white movie, this is Black Empowerment. Racist Hollywood, they gave you Black Empowerment. I don't know how you came to that conclusion. What are you doing every day? What are you putting your hands to? What are you putting your money into? Who are you helping? What are you helping? And is the things that you're helping building or leading us to liberation? You got to challenge yourself. Look, look at your day, recount your day over the past week and think about everything that you've done and then say, did that move us any closer to liberation? Mm -hmm. Oh, we get so in love with entertainment and celebrities and we, and we fawn over them and we love them, but then when it comes to actually doing some liberation work, folks are missing. Mm -hmm. Or social media, I see it because on social media, I get millions and millions of views. But when I'm in the street, where you at? Oh, that neighborhood too bad. They my brothers and sisters. Ain't no such thing as they too bad. Grown men tell me, I ain't going out there. Or them young brothers gonna try to kill you. Them young brothers ain't gonna try to kill you if you go out there with love. I walk anywhere in my, in my city, any and everywhere. And one thing I say that drives people crazy sometimes is I refuse when I walk past some brothers to check behind my back. I refuse to look back to see if, if, the, if the black man is walking behind me. I refuse to do it. And I have never in my life ever been randomly assaulted by a black man at night. But yet we have been trained to believe that our people are so inherently violent that if you see a black man late at night, he up for something. But you ain't up to nothing. So, so folks will like it on social media, they'll like it in a movie, but when you say, come on out and do something, nobody's there. Are you there? That's right. Good question. Or we can come to a conference. But tomorrow, if Pat says, I need some hands over at the farm to till the ground, who's going to go help him? Or some racist cops done did some of the black people, who going to show up and actually be there? Oh, it's easy to tweet hashtag, but what are your actions doing? Are your actions leading you to liberation? Or are you just sitting in the house, enjoying your life somewhat at least, while the rest of us out here fighting, and fighting for you, fighting for your children, 
Are your thoughts leading you to liberation? Are your actions leading you to liberation? And the third way I'm going to ask you the question is, are your surroundings leading you to liberation? Come on, make it black. See, you got to be around some stuff that builds up your spirit. Let me ask you guys something. Let's say we got a little seven-year-old boy, straight A's in science. He's in the science club. He goes to science fairs. He's in science competitions. He goes to science museums. What do you think he might get into as he gets older? question, everybody has the answer. He's going to do science. Why? Because he's always around science. What you around? Yeah. Good question. Good question. Yeah. So if we can easily identify what this little boy is going to do by what he's surrounded by, then we can identify what you're doing by what you're surrounded by. And your life is nothing but the total sum, right, of the top five places that you spend the most time. Where you at? You need to be around places and spaces that are going to build you up. You need to be around places and spaces that's going to teach you liberation, that's going to lift you up when you feel a little doubtful, when you feel like it's, you know, the, the fight is too big. When it seems like you can't do it, you got to be around spaces that's always going to encourage you. When you're thinking leading you to liberation, when your actions leading you to liberations, or your surroundings leading you to liberations, and this is always the hard one for people. Are your friends leading you to liberation? Mm -hmm. That's good. Oh, man. Uh, see, people don't want to let go of who they've been with all this time, no matter how detrimental they are. No matter how much negative stuff they speak into your mind. No matter how much they're doing things that are not advantageous to black liberation, but you don't want to let them go. So I do not, cannot, and will not hang around people who do not want liberation. I speak to you, I talk to you, I drop some gems on you, and I'm going to keep it moving, but I can't be around you like that. I can't hang with you every day, because just like your life is the total sum of the top five spaces you stay at, your life is also the total sum of the top five people that you hang around. Who are you hanging with? Mm -hmm. Who you hanging with? So we're talking about building black power, y'all. We, this is not just some conference where some kind words are coming. This is where we get challenged to actually get out there and do something. And everybody has a different gift. Everybody has a different part of this thing. And nobody's is bigger or smaller. Just because I got the mic and I might have a lot of views or a lot of people might see me speak, don't mean what I'm doing is no better than you. Y'all wouldn't be able to hear me as easy right now if it wasn't for those who put the mic together. It's, 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 it's all works together. You gotta, you gotta find out what your part of this thing is. But you're never gonna find it when you're around a bunch of individuals who don't even have liberation on a mindset. You're never going to find out what your purpose is if you're in a bunch of spaces that don't have liberation as a central theme. You're never going to figure out what you're supposed to do if you don't even try something with your actions. And you're never going to find what you're supposed to do if your thinking isn't even on liberation. It's time for us to start thinking, and it's time for us to start doing. And I'm going to say this. Just do something. Just do something. Now, I've been a professional speaker for 12 years. I speak all over the world. This is what I do for a profession. I used to play the flute. I used to play the cello. I used to think I was going to the NBA. I did a whole bunch of stuff. But then I found what God created me for. I did a whole bunch of different stuff, some good, some bad, but I was always trying something different, trying to find out what is that thing that I'm going to be great at? What is that thing that's going to be innate in me that nobody can take away, that nobody can stop, that I can do naked? See, one thing I always I teach about having a naked worth, you got to know what your worth stripped from everything that you have. Stripped from your money. 
Strip from your houses, strip from your clothes. What, what value do you just have as a human? That's what you got to begin to learn. And take your talent, whatever your talent is. I don't care if you're making toothpaste. I don't care if you're making tea, t-shirts. Do it for your people. Do it for your people. Is the life that you're leading leading us to liberation? And that's my challenge for you to ask yourselves from this day forward and make sure the life that you lead is leading us all to liberation. Thank you. Give it up one more time for my brother B. F. Yeah, I ain't know I was playing chess up here, did you? Yeah, I said, I'm a 